Uh, I do appreciate you uh, continue to hold uh, hearings. Obviously, I believe this is the most important hearing uh, in our committee in, in this Congress. I'd like to highlight uh, two of the most important broadband issues in my district. One county in my district, Jenkins County, has faced many challenges with AT&T for years now. According to the RDOF maps, well over 80% of the county is unserved. However, when Planners Telephone Cooperative attempted to service this area, they eventually had to suspend their efforts due to AT&T. This is unconscionable. Every year that my constituents do not have internet service, they and their children are falling further behind in both economic and education development. What is worse is that these constituents have absolutely no recourse. If another company attempts to provide internet service to these people in Jenkins County, all AT&T would have to do is prove that one single household has internet service at a one to 10 upload download speed, and they would continue to have exclusive service rights. Meanwhile, 99% of the county remains living with less internet access than many third world countries. Another cooperative in my district, Altamaha ENC, has had a nightmare experience with the USDA Reconnect program over the past two years. They originally applied for funding under the Reconnect Round 1, but were wrongfully deemed ineligible because of an incomplete service area validation survey. Once they applied again for Round 2 funding after waiting over a year, through no fault of their own, USDA refused to prioritize their second service area validation survey. It seems to me that with mapping of broadband access currently under the FCC's purview, we may have the wrong people in the wrong seats on the bus. I don't believe the FCC's original purpose was ever to serve as a mapping agency. Perhaps we should consider moving the responsibility of mapping broadband access to a federal agency that is actually built for that purpose. USDA's National Agriculture Statistics Service is one that comes to mind, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is another option. Uh, Dr. Park, could you explain the marginal advantage of satellite internet access versus fiber optic, and, wh and in what scenario is it more feasible or practical uh, to use? Oh, he doesn't, we don't need to include the questions, you don't think? Thank you, Congressman. So fiber is, is gold standard. Uh, there's no question about it. It's reliable, it's proven, um, but it is costly and it's all, also, um, it takes time. And I don't believe rural region that has such a diverse ge geography and patterns can be served all by fiber. Um, so we, we really need to think about how other wireless technology can complement the broadband technology. No question broadband is a necessary infrastructure for serving rural broadband. Well, well, we must think about other complementary technologies such as CBRS and other LTE standard that really allows other providers to take advantage of technologies to rapidly deploy um, these technologies to our region. Uh, but Dr. Park, uh, obviously I have one county next to Jenkins County where every household is served by a, an M, uh, a, a, a EMC and uh, each household can get uh, fiber optic run to their home through the Universal Fund. Yet at Jenkins County, because AT&T is for profit, they can't get internet service. So, uh, Ms. Prather, I'd like to ask you and, and any of the other con uh, panelists that would like to uh, speak to the point that I made in my comments uh, that uh, as far as mapping, it, you know, it seems like we're running up against a wall every time we try to do something with broadband. And this government's spending tons of money, yet this is probably the biggest economic engine available to rural America in the history of the country. Uh, Ms. Price, would you like to comment on that? Sure, I would, thank you. I think that you make some very, very good points. Um, one thing I would say is that the FCC has been undertaking more and more mapping initiatives, but they wanna wait until it's perfect to get it out the door. 
Instead, the, the information that they have, we need to get out and start utilizing it. And you make a great point about it's no good if we don't have some way to verify what is there. I will say that's one of the good things from the USDA. Um, what they do is that they can bring people to the local level and actually test that. So if you have an area that's deemed served, we can go out and test and see if that's really the case and then update that. Because we don't want to build just to those minimum standards today. If we're going to put money forth and build a project, we want to use those future-proof technologies and build for the future. Well, thank you. And I'm out of time, and I yield back. And if any of you would like to comment further on what I said, please uh, furnish those to us in writing. Thank you.